lot of people like that. Oh, like that. That is a great one. Oh, that was that a good, good one? That's a good one. We love Tara Thai. Thank you, thank you. Thailand might be a 20 hour flight from New York City, but Thai food is booming out here. So in this video, we're gonna eat at the top three hottest Thai restaurants in the city, Pranakan, Suther, and Bangkok Supper Club. Let's go. All right, everybody, I just got to Pranakan. This might just be the best Thai street food in America. This is highly ranked. They just got a Michelin guide. All right, sliding into my bench here, guys. I mean, I love the decor. It's kind of based off soy food, which is like alley food, you know, these little street eats that you would get in the alleyway of, of Bangkok, for example. This one is curry pancake. So the stuff with like, you know, chicken and egg inside and then come with the cucumber sauce, which is like gonna keep the sweetness to that curry pancake. I would say the mataba. Mataba. Okay. So and then this call homo in Thai, that one we stuff with maso. And then that hummus will taste a little sweet, a little spicy. Bursting with lemongrass, curry, mussels. This is crispy pork belly. So we call in Thai is mu pro kua prikia. It's a crispy pork that marinade with salt and pepper. Mmm. Oh. Oh, that crispy garlic was so good. Woo! It's our best seller, it's called like garden roll. So that garden roll will be serving with look like mayo, but it's uh, spicy and sour, mm. and it's kind of refreshing, not too heavy as well. Inside awesome. will be a fried tofu and all vegetables. Dip in with the fried tofu. Mmm, that tastes like a Thai fried tofu. Caesar salad wrap. Yo, this is called Namto Kamu Mmm, this is the, the pork cheek. Lots of fresh chopped up uh, cilantro, basil, peppers. Let's get it. Mmm, I wish I had a little ball of sticky rice right now. I'd pound it into a little mitt and I'd scoop it up. Kao yum. In Thai, it's Kao yum as well. Kao yum? Yo, I've never had this dish before, man. Mmm, I'm just gonna pour everything on. This is what I was told to do, guys. Squeeze some lime, ooh. And I'm just gonna, I mean, to have a Thai dish so colorful, I think it's so pleasing to the eyes. And sometimes what I do love about like eating Asian food in America, it's kind of cool because sometimes if you're in that country, you'll get just more regional cuisine, which at least here you kind of get an overview. So that's what's cool about this dish, I mean, Mm. It's pretty interesting and it kind of reminds me of this Indonesian dish called rojak that you have this sweet peanutty brown sauce and you mix it together with veggies and that kind of just reminds me of my travels across Southeast Asia. And what I find so delightful about this masaman curry is the little pieces of star anise that are still there. So I got into like little Gordon Ramsay style because you know I know Gordon Ramsay he loves Southeast Asian food. Uh, anyways guys, uh, trying to try the masaman curry. It's nice, dark, and peanut buttery. Mmm, look at this beef rib. It's gonna fall off the bone, watch this. Ooh. Guys, this is like, if you like yourself a little sweet peanutty dish, mmm. Hard to find something better than masaman curry. Not too spicy very thick and sweet. Guys, and the reason why I think Thai food is so interesting is because it's such a mixture of different influences. It has its kind of natural Thai influences, but it also has a lot of Indian influence and a lot of Chinese influence too. So it's really bringing together and kind of like taking and picking a lot of what is great about each culture, to be honest. They also have all the fresh Southeast Asian general like, you know, Thai influences. The fresh pla ta nam pla, which is a fried boneless fish. Yo, I like how they took the bones off. You know what people like. Yeah, right. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the crispy part, obviously. I'm just gonna use my hands. Let's get down and dirty. I'm gonna mix it with the papaya salad. I got my little fresh sticky rice that's burning my fingertips right now. It's hot, it's hot, but I make a little mitt. Kind of smash it on top. Mmm. It's dishes like this, the branzino with the mango salad. That's why Pranakan 
How's a Michelin guide recommend? In Thailand, we call Mama Mofai, which is like a noodle inside, and then the broth is like this. Oh, wow. Is it the Mama noodles? Yes. Ah. Right. <laughs> I love those. The classic dollar pack of instant noodles, but this is dressed up to the 10th degree. You got a soft boiled egg, you got fresh crispy pork, you got the fish cakes, you got a whole bunch of lime and fresh prawns, guys. Mmm. Same great taste. Do a little egg yolk on the shrimp. Mmm. This really does taste like a magnificent version of something you'd get in the alleyway. Our pranafan pad thai. Wow! Which is uh, serving with scrambled egg, and then all the vegetables, we like you to mix it, everything together mm -hmm. before you eat. It's uh, our style. All right, guys, I'm gonna go in. There are all these different um, veggies on the side. You got the chili peppers, you got the fresh little sliced green beans. I'm gonna get these chives in there. All right. Do you judge a Thai restaurant by its pad thai? This ain't the pad thai I grew up not really liking. This is the gold standard for pad thai. Now for kanam one, aka dessert. What do we have? Yeah, so this one called uh, ice cream sundae, which is one of our traditional in Thailand. All right, let me see if I can get everything in a bite together. Let me see. You guys ever eat ice cream with rice? They just gotta do this, man. They do work out here. That's why they wear the construction vest, is because they do work here. Oh my gosh, another thing. That one called uh, Thai Hustler, which mm. is in Thailand we call Kanom Tue. Kanom Tue. Smooth, soft, sweet, tiny bit salty. Wow, that's really interesting. I like it. It's very warm. This is called. Uh, Thai egg kasar. In Thailand, we call khao niao sang kaya. Wee! Man, they love doing things with coconut and the sticky rice. Mmm! I'm gonna take some of this ice cream. Listen, so guys, if you like Thai food and you haven't been to Pranakan, what are you doing? Listen, a balance between authenticity, polish, experience, quality. I don't know if you could beat Pranakan. And our next Thai restaurant is actually Soother. They specialize in Bangkok street food. So I'm really excited. Let's check it out. All right, so we're here at Soother. And again, we are witnessing the evolution of Thai food in New York City. I mean, listen, these are top chefs from Bangkok coming to New York to do like Bangkok street food. Listen, we kind of have these uh, deep fried. So that's a crispy dumpling right here. We have deep fried egg rolls or duck rolls, I should say. Here you got the curry puffs, the classic kind of little football pillows here. You got the pork jowl right here. And this, this is oh, this is one of my favorite dishes, man. All right, here. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot of seafood right there. I'm very excited. Mm. It is actually more kind of like one of those Hakka chicken rolls that you can kind of find in Taiwan, except it's all seafood. That's super good. Now let's take a look at this duck roll. Initially, you're just gonna assume, oh, it's like an egg roll. This must be the Chinese Thai dish. But nah, it's different. Ooh. Me and my friends have hot debates about who has the best egg roll. Is it the Philippines? Is it Thailand? Is it Vietnam? Is it China? A little Viet spring roll-like, but a lot of Peking duck-like, actually. Wow. Here we have the Thai curry puff. Now, you see these at a lot of restaurants, but let me tell you this. Suther does it a little differently. It's actually pork and curry on the inside. Wow! Man, I'm excited, guys. Mmm. Wow. Yo, these apps were so good. And what I love about all the new Thai restaurants in New York City, especially like Soother and Pranacon, is that they're just showing you the breadth of Thai food. And I don't even think we scratched the surface of it yet. One of my favorite dishes right here. Mmm. And of course, what is a top level restaurant in New York? without some amazing cocktails. I don't know if these are cocktails or mocktails right now, but I'm gonna find out. Ooh, that's delicious. Kind of like a salted plum soda. I think that's a mocktail, there's no alcohol. Let's try this one, this looks like matcha. Smooth. 
like soup. Here we go. Mmm, fruity, fizzy. I think rose syrup in this one. Woo! The star anise and the cinnamon is strong in this one. I love that. And moving on to the entrees here, man. Here we have the shrimp curry with egg sauce. This is actually the dish that got them their Michelin star, man. And what makes the curry different is it's not just curry. It has eggs whipped up into it. Mmm. Not every Thai restaurant is going to have this. Another dish that you're not going to find at a lot of Thai restaurants is the duck noodles. They have the squiggly egg noodles. They got the duck. Gosh, look at how they place everything. It's beautiful. I'm going to pour this kind of thick soy sauce on. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Oh my gosh, the duck is amazing. Super soft, super moist, cooked all the way through though. And the, it's a very light flavor, so I think if you want a light dish that's kind of sweet, this is it. What is now becoming a very common Thai staple dish to have at your Thai restaurant is the cow soy chicken curry noodle. Two different types of noodle. Part of it's fried, part of it's not. Guys, uh, this rains uh, from Chiang Mai, like the northern region. I think one of the unique things is putting the fried noodle and the fresh noodle together in the same dish, and that's one of the cool things about cow soy. Let's try it. Got that nice little spicy kick to it, but has that smooth creaminess from the coconut milk. Guys, this is the curry dish for even non-curry lovers. Next dish that are the pork spare ribs in their very own signature soother marinade and glaze. Uh, it's gonna be spicy. Mm. Oh. It's not even the spice that I gotta chase. It's like that that strong, super strong flavor. I like it. Tom yum see What makes a good Tom yum soup? Like, does it have to be very sour or the right type of sour? It's more like tasty, like sour and a spicy. Let's try. Mm. Mixture of everything in here. Smooth, creamy. Got a little bit of half and half milk in there to kind of smooth things out. Guys, this Tom yum is hitting. Just everything is hitting, to be honest. Last but not least, you cannot leave a Thai restaurant without getting Pad Thai. So I'm gonna compare Suther's Pad Thai to Pranacon's. Both look amazing. Shrimp Pad Thai at Suther. Michelin recommended. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. Again, man, Suther does not fail. This Pad Thai is delicious. And of course, Guys, what, a, what is a fun gross food video now without trying smala on something? I'm going to try it on the pad thai here. How does smala do on soother pad thai? Add some smokiness to it. Pretty good. All right, guys, ending off here at soother. I mean, you know, we just got to show you where Thai food is at at this point, you know. So let's try it. Mmm, that's decadent. Does not taste like that artificial pandan flavor that a lot of people have. Anyways, here we got the mango sticky rice with ice cream. Mmm. That was like the ripest mango piece I've ever eaten. What the heck? Listen, New York City is already considered an international food haven. 14,000 kilometers away is Thailand. We're pretty far from Thailand, but the food here is really good. I'm so excited to see all the other new Thai restaurants that pop up in New York City. Thai food is good out here and people really like it. Guys, new Asian food you've never seen before. We are here at Bangkok Supper Club, a very nice high-end new Thai restaurant over in like the west side. Uh, here we got Hokkaido uh, ceviche right here. Oh my gosh, I'm about to take a bite right now. This has watermelon on top. That is super refreshing and sweet and also spicy at the same time. But guys, this is probably the star of the appetizers. This is called a crab uni tartlet. Okay, so it's got like the little tart crust, but it's got all like the creamy crab in the middle and then an uni and caviar, and they say to try to take it in one bite. Trust me, there is not a Thai restaurant like this because they're obviously doing some things very traditional, but obviously doing some things that are not. That had real like lemongrass, like 
kind of lime flavors that reminds me of the Thai side and then everything else. That was crazy. Here we have something I've never had before at any Thai restaurant, which is a fried duck egg salad. So you kind of have like, this is a fried duck egg right here. Oh my gosh, a little gooey yolk. Oh shoot, let's get into it. Guys, new Asian food in New York you've never seen before. Shout out to Bangkok Supper Club. Same people as Fish Cheeks. These two are must gets. All right, we got our entrees here at Bangkok Supper Club. And let me tell you this guys, the prices here are a little bit higher than maybe other Thai restaurants, but you get a vibe and actually the quality is right there. This is Gayang grilled on a full charcoal grill. This is crazy, look how juicy that is. You see that real charcoal burn right there? And just everything is so aesthetic, man. It looks great on the gram too. Yo, you can't fake the charcoal flavor. All right, here we got beef cheeks and masa mom curry. I'm gonna break off a little bit of this crispy rice right here. Let's take a look at this beef cheeks. Wow. I'm gonna just go in, man. Yo, that melted in our mouth, that was crazy. And this, probably the premier dish here. This is the pork jowl over crispy rice. Ooh, ooh. Let me get a little onion on there. Whoa, the amount of textures is crazy, guys. This is a one of the few Thai spots that you're not gonna be able to find Pad Thai or Pad Si on. So, if you're celebrating something, you want something nice, you want to come out to West Village area, Chelsea area, this is right on the border, Bangkok Supper Club is quite the experience. Yo man, Thai food in New York City, it is so good. All right, dessert here, like we said, Bangkok Supper Club, doing different things here. We got a pandan cake inside, underneath coconut jelly, inside of a real coconut, and then you here you have a sticky rice cake um, with sweet potato ice cream on top with uh, toasted coconut, so first of all, Let's get into this one though, because this is the this is the interesting one. I'm gonna dig through it. Watch this. Oh wow! I'm just let me fix up that bite. Yeah, pandan cake. That's nice cream. Wow, 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 wow. All right, let's go into this one. Mmm, this kind of reminds me of like a babinka at the bottom, the Filipino bread. Dang, a lot of different textures, I like it, man. All right, guys, we are here with the head chef, Max, of Bangkok Supper Club. What was your inspiration behind this spot? Because I noticed you don't have Pad Thai, Pad Siu, none of that stuff. You no, know, because I wanna uh, let people explore more about Thai food, not only just Pad Thai. We have mm. a lot of variety of Thai food. Uh, it's something that you can get it. So you go to the concert, uh. after you go to the wedding, something that you go to this place to get this kind of thing. It's like you're doing traditional, I feel like, but adding something else, you know, you have the Hokkaido ceviche and stuff like that. That's that's cool, man. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef Max. All right, you guys, we are at Dumplings and Dips, which is a brand new Thai street food fusion concept here on St. Mark's. And uh, what we're looking at are fusion siu mais, essentially. They don't call them siu mais in Thailand, but they just call them dumplings. And this one is like masamang curry. This is pad thai. We've got pork basil, chicken basil. So basically these represent different Thai dishes. And uh, this is a little bit of a fusion. And I'm telling you dumplings and dips, they're always adding new stuff to their menu. So this is a masamang curry dumpling. Oh my gosh. Like we said, what they're doing here that's super unique that they don't even do in Bangkok is essentially put Thai dishes inside of the dumplings. Like we said, guys, you know, in China, I can't find fusion siu mais. I believe even in Bangkok, I do think they have a more diverse style range, but I don't know if you can find a pad thai dumpling in Bangkok. All right, next up, we've got the Tom Yum dumpling. Oh my goodness. It's good. This one is the crab fried rice dumpling. All 
right, you guys, some of these dishes taste way more like the dish they're based off of than other ones. I would definitely say that Tom Yum one is a pure Tom Yum seal mine. Pork basil. Last but not least, of course, of the dumplings, we got chicken basil. Honestly, guys, this is some new style Thai street food. I'm gonna go with my two favorites. I'm gonna say uh, shrimp tom yum and crab fried rice. All right, you guys, and last but not least, here at Dumplings and Dips, they got a variety of new fusion dishes. What are we looking so, at right this here? This one is mango sticky rice, so we try to do like mango sticky rice in the dumplings, like Thai, like uh, dessert dish. And what about this? Um, this one is uh, the egg noodles with the crab fried rice dumplings, so inside they're gonna be the crab fried rice mm. in the dumplings. So we fry them, so it's like crispy, like. Good. Listen guys, if you know about uh, Thailand's history, it's so interesting. They have a gigantic Chinese diaspora there, about like 10 million people. And uh, as you can see, you got a lot of like one ton influence dishes, but they certainly, certainly make it their own and they got their own spin on it. Fried crab, fried rice, dumplings, siu mai. Listen guys, they got kale noodles here. If you want to be a little bit more like modern with it, but man. It's dope to see the fusion. Every time I come back to Dumplings and Dips, they're doing something brand new with their menu. They got things I've never tried before. This is a fried mango sticky rice dumpling right here. Of course, you've got the coconut ice cream as you guys have been seeing throughout this video. It's a very common theme. Honestly, we've eaten so many desserts throughout this video. This is the best one. There's like something about that fried mochi shell. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. The mango sticky rice had the perfect ratios inside. If you wanna see a Thai food street concept that's like doesn't exist in Bangkok, it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, come to Dumplings and Dips. I grew up eating Oh, so Chinese, Malay, and Thai. Thai, oh. yeah. So the Thai in the south is would be like not sweet, and then very pungent, spicy, and then uh, very, um, how do you say, like uh, a really mix. Listen, last but not least, guys, we are in Terra Thai. This is run by a Chinese Thai family from Trang, which is in Southern Thailand. I've got the Kaprao right here. I've got satay chicken. I've got the Mu Ping. Mu Ping is like a grilled street pork with the sticky rice. I just gotta go in on the Mu Ping because this is what I was feeling. Um, listen, guys, we're in Terra Thai right now. Terra means earth. Look, look what's going on. Mmm. Guys, when you are talking about street food, you're looking for the street vibe, both in ambiance, in terms of the decor and the venue you're in, but also from the walk. I'm telling you, at Terra Thai, you can go back there right now. The walk is on fire. It's crazy in here. I see so many rare vegetables being shuttled in and out of this tiny spot. This is street food. Listen, guys, this is saute chicken. A lot of you guys probably have not had Thai saute chicken not on the skewer. Yes, the skewer style is also very, very real, but this was grilled chopped up you got the all the saute coverage this is just a new i've never even eaten this dish this way oh my gosh feel like i'm on my lunch break i'm a blue collar worker in thailand listen this is all dark meat on the chicken saute dude the food here punches way above its weight class come to terra thai last but not least andrew this is a dish that people really like called kaprao when you talk to thai workers they're always like yeah, I love everything on the menu, but my favorite is the Caprao. I've heard that multiple times off camera while filming this video, guys. This is our last spot. It only makes sense to end with the Caprao. You know, it's a simple dish. It's comfort food. It always comes with a soft, runny egg on top. Listen, guys, throughout doing this video, I've gained a lot of perspective on Thai food. You have so many different regions, central, northern, northeastern, southern, even within those regions and provinces, you got subgenres, sub bullets. I'm telling you guys, there's so much Thai food going on right now. It's so good. Like, dude, 
it, it, even the owner here was telling me that her town growing up was a mixed town in Southern Thailand where there was a ton of Thai people, Chinese people, Malay people, and that the food ended up being a hybrid of all those different influences. I think that that's why people love Thai food. There's the ancient Indian influence as well in the curries. Listen guys, if you guys have seen the SEO, Thai food is on the come up. And as long as people execute it right, I'm, I'm just saying the Thai street food's taking over. We love Terra Thai. Thank you, thank you. Listen guys, the food is kicking. The vibes are friendly. The hospitality is there. I don't really see any downside to getting Thai food. Especially if you go to a good spot like Terra Thai or all the other spots that we went to. Kap Kung Kap.